Hello everybody, welcome to the Element Physics channel. The topic of today's video is Discovery of Helium. Helium, the second member of the periodic table, was surprisingly not known till the later part of the 19th century. Being the second lightest and the second most abundant element in the observable universe, one would think that its discovery was confirmed only in 1895. It was not a momentous discovery, but rather a discovery that occurred over a period of time. Several people share the credit for the discovery of helium. In fact, here I listed about 10 names. Uh, uh, these are the names of the scientists who contributed either directly or indirectly to its discovery. The precursor to the discovery of helium was the total solar eclipse of 1868. Several expeditions were sent to different parts of the world to observe this uh, eclipse and record the uh, spectrum of the solar chromosphere and its uh, prominences. On the 18th of August that year, Jules Yamusen, a French astronomer who was on expedition to observe and study the eclipse from India, along with several others uh, from other regions, observed an unusual yellow line in the recorded spectrum. Yamusen uh, realized shortly later uh, that the uh, solar atmosphere could be spectroscopically observed even without an eclipse. British astronomer Lockyer probably even earlier had a similar realization but he could not record the spectrum of the solar atmosphere until October 1868. The ability to observe a solar spectrum this way was considered an important discovery at the time. Several scientists began to investigate about the unusual yellow line in the solar spectrum um, their investigations were inconclusive since the line was close to the wavelengths of two sodium yellow lines. And this is uh, the solar spectrum uh, that is recorded. And front of her, I studied some dark lines in the solar spectrum, which were later realized to be the absorption lines. And he had labeled them from a to K, because in the spectrum, the lower wavelengths are on the left side, 300 nanometers to 750 nanometers, starting from violet to red. And he had labeled uh, from red to violet, uh, starting with alphabets A to K. Uh, those uh, dominant lines in the spectrum, he had uh, labeled using these alphabets. And then for the less dominant lines, he had used other letters as well. From the labeling of uh, Franofer, uh, the D line was later found to be split due to spin orbit coupling into two lines, namely D2 and D1, the higher wavelength being D1. The D1 value is 589.6 nanometers and the D2 wavelength is 589 nanometers. So later this was found to be belonging to uh, the element sodium. By the end of the year, Jules Yonsei, Angelo Sacchi and Norman Lockyer they had independently recognized that the yellow line was not the same as those from uh, that observed for sodium. It was important to prove that the observed yellow line was not from any other known element because the line could have been, uh, for example, belonging to hydrogen and an unobserved line belonging to hydrogen. This was exactly what Lockyer had thought for several years. In fact, he and uh, Edward Franklin they had performed several unsuccessful experiments to prove this. They call this line the D3 line because of its connection to the D1 and D2 lines of sodium. In fact, Lockyer had suggested that this could be due to another form of hydrogen. It was Lord Kelvin during his 1871 presidential address to the British Association uh, who suggested that this, could be a, this uh, DZ line could be due to a new substance since Lockyer and Franklin's experiments could not prove that it belonged to any known element. Lockyer and Franklin preferred calling this new substance helium after helios, the Greek word for sun. It was in 1895 that helium was clearly observed on Earth by William Ramsey, who got to know that William Francis Hillebrand had performed some experiments uh, with uranium ores in which uh, nitrogen gas had evolved. To confirm this experiment, he performed uh, the same experiment and recorded the spectrum. As expected, he found lines belonging to both nitrogen as well as the recently discovered organ. In fact, Ramsey along with Raleigh had 
discovered uh, only recently uh, the element organ. So he sent the spectra to Crookes for analysis and William Crookes systematically analyzed the uh, spectrum uh, and found that the D3 line was present in that spectrum as well. William Crookes measured the wavelength of this line and confirmed that it is the same as the D3 line thereby proving the terrestrial existence of helium. Frederick Kaiser in 1895, observed the same yellow line in the spectrum of a gas that emanated from a spring in Black Forest Mountains in Germany. Eventually, E. C. Bailey confirmed in 1898 helium's existence in Earth's atmosphere. Thus, no one person can be credited uh, with the discovery of helium. That brings us to the conclusion of this video. Hope to See you soon on another interesting video. Until then, cheers.